this happens so many times. We put sound, Nico said 50%. I would say more than 50%. And not just me, actually. If you read what the director says, it's more than 50%. Huh? Why do we put it so low on our priority list? It looks amazing, fine. You really want it, fine. But there will be consequences for sound. If you're willing to pay that price in creative work, in cost of the production, no worries. But understand that there are consequences. Bringing experts who can say, you know what, this is good, or this floor is really creaky, or here I can't use my radio mics because all the planes fly above and there's going to be a lot of problems, is important to kind of have the conversation. Um, Costume, head and make, uh, hair and makeup. I mean, super important having very early on conversations regarding sound. You know, Edmund showed yesterday the, the, the camera test and, and all this kind of thing. It should be sound test as well. I mean, that dress looks amazing, but it's made out of plastic. And it's like every time the actress movie sounds like it's the end of the world, you know. You don't want that. It's not going to work. Can you please find the material that is less noisy? Maybe the character has a mask that prevents from, you know, capturing intelligible dialogues. Thinking ahead is going to save you so much kind of money and time and stress and problems and headaches and Netflix emails, you know, later on. Huh? So as early as possible. I see. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. This is something that is kind of also common issue, the, the size of the sound, sound crew. I don't have to tell you, but the more people on set thinking about sound, better sound. You know, <laughs> mind blown. But it's true. You know, like yesterday I heard, oh, there's only one person on set. I was like, okay, give me the phone number of the production. I mean, two is the bare minimum if you want to capture something that is, okay, I'm not talking about guerrilla shooting, ENG team, just like documentary. I'm talking about really, this is in Kinetics production. There needs to be more people. There needs to be. Also, this is an amazing opportunity to introduce new people, to have trainees. You know, you, in, in, let's say, production that values sound, you have obviously sound mix, so you have boom operator. Sometimes you have second boom operator or sound assistant who is going to be picking up the boom where there is requirement, dealing with radio mics. But you would also have trainee. You have somebody who is there to learn on set how things work. This is how we introduce new young people. Okay? To, this doesn't cost a lot, but it's going to be super helpful to have somebody running around, rolling the cables and whatnot. Okay? Think about it. Finally, connecting the sound team as early as possible. So this is when connecting the sound team, I mean connecting the sound team to other departments like editorial. Yeah. So they have conversation before the shoot. What kind of uh, layout for your tracks you want in the edit? Do you want mono mix? Do you want stereo mix? Are you going to be working just with mix? Are you going to be working with ISO tracks? What do you want to receive? I'm going to be obviously recording metadata. Do we want to make a round trip for sound metadata to understand if you're going to be actually be able to import? Because when Nina starts working and there is no name of the microphones, she's going to just shoot herself. Huh? She's going to go back to the tutorial. Can you export again? Because I can't. There's a hundred tracks. I have no idea what they are. I'm not going to listen to each track. It's going to take forever. Yeah? But also connecting the sound team in general, the production sound mixer that I mentioned already with the with a, a, a sound supervisor, sound, so they have communication. So the production sound mixer can pick up the phone and say, you know what? I don't think I managed to capture good dialogues in that location. Can you have a listen? Can you have a listen and tell me, do we need to reshoot that? There's going to be ADR. Maybe I can pick like ADR on set while we have a break for lunch or something. How would you know? So, and also with all other teams as well. All right, back to our... Finally, we entered the production, yeah, with all these things in our mind. So we put all the, remember the little uh, Edmonds, little uh, happy faces, you know, why we put all this work and the faces are happy. So the, the shoot starts, and this is where the chaos, you first week, oh, we're doing well, and then by the week three, you're like, you have no idea what's happening. But the key, again, is the collaboration, yeah, between the sound team and other departments. You know, I come, originally I'm from Serbia, and also small film industry sound, department usually neglected you know i always like to give a, a, a kind of silly example everybody eats here and sound team eats right next to the toilet you know is that kind of you know um and this has been traditional 
not just in in uh, countries with the not kind of massive film history but everywhere you know even in big countries in uk or france or spain or in states the sound team somehow is less important i mean think 50 percent how is how is that less important <laughs> there's a little bit of frustration in me huh? <laughs> uh, you can uh, you can sense it uh, i just kind of uh, fight for my colleagues but the idea is there it's often the, the quality of the work of the sound department depends least on the sound department themselves and you know it when a sound guy needs to go around please shh, quiet we're gonna you know no, i don't want to do that i want to have like to say okay sound rolling everybody's silent because i don't eat sound i don't take it home and you know no <laughs> we are working on a project together no i want to make our your film better yeah now obviously there are people uh, this is a good point that made yes there are people who are just jaded they've been working 30 years and they're like ah, i don't give yeah but not everybody is like that there are people who care i care <laughs> i also care because at the end i need to listen you know like nicola what do you think i was like you know so key people are on on set obviously uh you know everybody else as well think about it you know it happens all the time can we have one minute just to can i can do a room tone bus track oh man <sighs> laugh and then you don't get it and then when you need to make m and e you receive 700 notes for m and e i mean you work for netflix come on you know what i'm talking about so how to best capture the sound that's the key every every minute that you put more in thinking about sound at the beginning and during the process is going to pay off massively at the end. I guarantee this. On a technical level, on a creative level, on less emails level. Yeah? Um, and when it comes to field, as I said, it was not just about capturing dialogue, it was about capturing all the other things as well. So I have the building blocks. Okay, we move on. We start the shoot. Yeah? Lovely. Prepping the set. I said, oh, this, this is very creaky floor. Can we have some carpets? Production department, can you please, production design, can you kind of get some, or maybe I have carpets, put it in. Put, uh, you know, some kind of diffusers, maybe a curtain here. Can we move the generator? Can we do this? Can we do that? I mean, extremely important. Also working very closely with the camera department, with the grip, with sparks. You know, like that light, I mean, my microphone is going to throw. Can you please put a flag? I mean, can we make it? I mean, we are a team. We are all trying to make the best possible content for Netflix. <laughs> yeah. So, so let's let's act like a team. Huh? And I know that, as I said, I've been there. Things get out of control. You have 15 minutes of the sun. It's a golden hour. If we miss this, you know, and there's not going to be from sound. No, 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 no. No, I'm going to record whatever I can. But rest of the day is not golden hour. Huh? <laughs> it's like a eight hours of shooting time, you know, so please. Let's uh, think about it. Wild tracks, room tones, I already talked about it, you know. But wild tracks are super important. Think about it, it's a very simple thing. We just rolled the camera, it was an amazing take. Director threw the headphones, like, that's it, I'm done, you know. And you're like, oh, sorry, but there was a plane. Uh, can we, by any chance, have another take? Yeah? Yes, please. Actor is warm, just deliver the, the Oscar winning performance. Just make him repeat or her the whole scene without the camera rolling, capture the sound, and you have it. You don't need to do ADR, you don't have to worry about anything. It costs, it costs nothing, one minute of everybody's time, and you solve the problem. It's beautiful, no? Buzz tracks, I talked about it, yeah? Um, dailies. We don't check sound, do we? We should, if we don't. Maybe we do, maybe we don't. But check, because let's say you have a problem. The mic is faulty, or there, something is wrong with the recording. If it's wrong today, and we check it in the evening, tomorrow I can fix it. And there's only one day that has problematic sound. If I don't check it, and they talked about it, you come to edit and you understand the whole week or two weeks are recorded with the buzz. And you're like, how did this happen? How come nobody heard it? Simple thing. We already check, we should already check daily. Check it for sound, listen to it. Moving on. My favorite. <laughs> um, 
empower production sound mixer during the shoot. We talked about it, yeah? And I like this because, you know, the uh, record sound on your movie, the loudest person on set, yeah? If this is the case, it's wrong. The best work I've ever done in my life, in post, in, in production, was when I was allowed to do my work. When I didn't have to fight, when I didn't have to think, when I was allowed to do what I was hired to do. And I honestly believe it's a producer's job, and on set it's a line producer, or even more, first assistant director, the most important person on set, who will allow me to do my job. So I don't have to worry about other things, but I can focus on capturing that performance, that brilliant performance, in the best possible way. Because that's what we're here to do, no? To make good content. All right. So, funny, not funny. And uh, all these things that I talked, and even more, we have on a partner health center. Last year, we published this article where we kind of outlined many of these kind of good uh, uh, things that we can put into practice. Please read. Give it to your production sound mixer. Give it to everybody who needs to read, because at the end of the day, um, as I said, we're all on the same boat. Let's make that boat a pleasurable place for everyone. Um, and then we move to editorial. This is just before the sound starts, or sometimes, as I say, Nico doesn't like picture editorial. <laughs> I'm a sound person, sorry. Um, so a lot of important things from sound perspective needs to happen in editorial as well. Obviously, editors deal with sound. They're editing sound as well. And that's always going to be the case. It's never going to change. But I'm talking about a little bit extra. So let me give you an example from the field. So because it was a close collaboration, um, I knew the, the, uh, the editor. Obviously, I was close with the directors. I got involved with, during the edit stages. Okay? Meaning, they had a scene, they would send it to me, can you have a listen, please? Maybe put some sound, see how this works. I was like, yeah, sure. I put some sounds, it gives me some ideas, I send it back, aha, this is what you actually want to do. All right, maybe then we actually need to add extra shots here, extend this, and the, and, the sh and the scene that I showed you, we extended a lot the whole scene, added these details, or, or extended some shots, changed the order. Why? Because we wanted to build that crescendo, to have time for sound to grow. Yeah? So working closely back and forth is immensely important. Why? Because then when Nina starts working, when the sound starts actually post-production, she doesn't have to start from scratch. She has the idea where she wants to go. And on bigger production, this happens regularly because we have, you know, we have access to But this is the, the cost almost nothing. I always say, like, uh, you know, as a rule, a day per week of edit. That's how, you need to, how much you need to pay for an extra work. So I'm not going to be working in parallel. There's no need. But if I'm there a couple of hours per day or per week, I have this scene. Or we have this scene and the, the lines of dialogue, it's, like it's very kind of dirty. Can you have a look? Is this going to be able? We're going to be able to clean this later on or not? Shall we find a different take? Also super important. So working closely. Um, now, this yellow line is my favorite line. Huh? It's called spotting session. So we locked the picture. Netflix said, that's it. Version 11 is the one. <laughs> and uh, OK, let, we are good to go. So this, this, I don't know if it happens, but I want to talk about it because it doesn't happen always. And I think it should happen always. Um, we have a spotting session. So the director, pic editor, I almost said picture editor, sorry. <laughs> director, the editor, um, supervising sound editor, sound designer, who is, whoever is in charge of the project, composer, we sit together and we watch the film. We watch an episode. And we go closely, scene to scene, and have a conversation. What is this scene about? What is trying to say? How are we going to solve? What are we going to do with sound? What are we going to go do, do with music? How does this make sense? We all make notes. It's going to be my guideline how to approach the work afterwards. Okay, if you already don't know from working closely. But already the idea is that, OK, this scene is going to be music driven. All oh, right, great. So I don't have to put too much sound. I can, or you know what? I'm going to be the composer. I'm going to be working with the kind of high frequency tones there. I was like, OK, great. I can put some low frequency drones in my ambience. So they're going to, they're going to fight you know, to understand what is this seen about how we're going to do it with sound. Super important, should always happen, in my opinion, because then I know what I'm actually doing. And often the problem is the sound that the tutorial receives 
the picture, they have no idea what is really happening because they have not been involved in conversations before. Um, and that was the kind of example of collaboration from the field, back and forth, that really influenced the cut. At the end of the day, we create audio-visual pieces. Yeah? So that's the, something to remember. So editors are super busy. They have so many things to do. They will do basic sound. And some, some editors are going to do a lot of sound. But always having somebody else to bring in an extra ear and say, you know what? Maybe you can try this. Important thing that we did for this shoot, but also that I would recommend, if you have somebody attached to the project earlier on, ideal opportunity for the sound department to provide the sound for the editorial department. So you don't have to, editors don't have to steal from YouTube or search online for some kind. No, no, no. Oh, we are working uh, in the field. Okay, for that show we recorded loads. There was, but if we didn't record, I have in my sound library, use this. These are already good quality sounds that we are allowed to use. Okay, so director doesn't get into a daily's love or editing love syndrome. Huh? Oh, you know, it happens all the time in the, in the mix in particular. Oh, you know, during the offline stage, we had that really interesting sound that we got from YouTube of that car passing. Can we have it? <laughs> sure. Happens all the time. People fall in love with particular visuals and sounds and colors and so on and so forth. So if they're already working with the good sound, with a good library that we have, that we can make better, win, win, win. Recap. As a timeline, we talked about the first part. There are a lot of interesting things that we can address. I would say, if you need to walk with one thing away, think about sound as early as possible, okay? From scripting, maybe there's gonna be a way to make your script better, maybe not, but you will never know unless you try. Pre-production, sit hard, get people involved, break down the script, understand what the challenges might be. Because if you understand the challenges, you will remove that part of the stress of the day, and you will just deal with the current issues that will occur on the day, yeah? When production comes, ensure that people are available to do their jobs, to do well, that we planned it well. How complex it is gonna be? What do we need to capture, okay? At the end of the day, you're gonna be extremely happy because it's gonna sound really good. And finally, when it comes to picture editorial, before we hand over to the uh, uh, sound post, uh, maybe there is a space and way for somebody to help. Editors are always overworked. They never have enough time. They have so many things to think about. They're cutting everything and trying. If we can relieve them of some of that stress by introducing somebody who will think exclusively, we not just benefit their creative work, but it will also happen that the sound becomes organic part of the picture. It works together. It doesn't come and sits on top at the very end of the project. Okay? And I want to finish with the uh, something that I read just the other day, it was published in the, uh, this magazine, Sound Magazine, and it was from Alejandro Gonzalez Iñárritu, and uh, this is what his quote was. Sound is primal. It is sensorial frequency. It hits our body, and our body does not lie. Unlike the image, it does not need a process of interpretation or intellectualization. For this reason, I think sound is even more impactful than visuals, and throughout it, you can have a parallel narratives along the film.